Okay, it is now 10 past 12, and so I resume the hearing, um, which moves us on, um, unless anyone had forgotten, um, to policy SS14 and site ST16, that is the um, Terry's extension sites. My, my understanding is that there isn't a statement of common ground on this one, unless I've missed something. There, there's very little left uh, in respect of this site because um, uh, Phase three is already... Sorry, sorry sir, I, I've been patiently waiting for you to dispose of all the objections there. I do wish to speak on the ST14. But we've finished ST14. Oh, Mr Merritt. No, you said you wanted to deal, first of all, with the people who objected to the principle of the site being, there, you know, being approved at all. I've been waiting because ours is a, is a different form of objection. Apologies. Well, I'm afraid everyone's gone, including the promoters. Yeah, I, I had not realised, um, Mr. Murray, I, I didn't see um, you indicate. Well, no, um, I, I, I didn't indicate because of what you'd said when you started that. That causes me a problem, as you'll, as you'll understand, because um, we have basically other people who are involved in the debate are no longer here, yeah. um, which causes me potentially a fairness issue. Yeah. Um, do you have any suggestions, Mr. Elvin? is akin to his point about ST15 about enlarging the site. So it wouldn't be contrary to the interests of the promoters and it potentially contrary to the interests of the objectors is the problem. Um, all I can suggest is, is that we get Carol to contact them and ask them if they want to make a written response to what the Labour Party says uh, on pages 11 and 12 of its hearing statement. Which, I mean, Mr. Mr. Merritt, that, that's the point you're making, I, isn't I it? I am going to expand beyond the written statement, and also part of what I'm going to say is relevant to the Environment Forum, who, which we did not put in a written submission on. We just intended to speak. In, in which case, I don't see any option other than to deal with it in writing, unless we have to reconstitute a, a hearing session for it, which is not ideal. I wonder, and just thinking aloud here, um, I wonder if um, we allow, allow Mr Merritt to proceed, um, and then, because we're filming it, um, people, can, people can watch that, um, and then if they want to provide anything in written response to what Mr. Merritt has said, then I, I would allow them to do that. Does that sound I'd, a reasonable... I'd, I'd, I'd completely forgotten they could consult the film, so uh, yes, I, I, I think they have to be allowed an opportunity to come back um, uh, and, uh, and writing would seem to allow them a fair opportunity. Yes, I agree. Yeah, not, not ideal, um, but we, we, we are where we are. So, so I think um, what I'm going to do then, Mr. Merritt, as we've, we've just discussed, is I'll, I will hear from you um, now, um, but in the interests of fairness, um, I'll allow those participants that have now left um, the, the chance to comment on what you said, the chance to see the, the recording, um, and, and to comment um, on, on anything that you've raised in, in, in writing so that they aren't um, prejudiced from not being here for, from this yeah. part of the proceedings and, and, and hope that that is, um, that is sufficient. Um, so, okay, um, if you bear with me just one moment, as I take a step back 
um, then from site ST16 and continue with site ST14. Mr. Merritt. Thank you. Uh, saying this in the context of the Labour Party's previous representations over the unsoundness of the overall housing supply, affordable housing provision, the need to meet the NPPF requirements for sustainable development, and the need for the rapid uh, reduction in carbon emissions, uh, including uh, consequential reductions in private car usage that will be needed to address that. The latter two points are part also of the York Environment uh, Forum's concerns about the local plan. I'd want to highlight to the inspector the importance of this site that in reality, uh, outside of the main urban area, uh, brownfield sites, is probably the best one in the city uh, in terms of a strategic site having easy access, walking distance to major employment, large retail and leisure opportunities uh, at Clifton Moor. Again, however, it is one of these sites that this council has substantially squeezed down in size and which we think should be, fully, should be reinstated to the maximum size possible, uh, including to the south of the current proposal. The degree of squeeze, as uh, Mr Butler said, uh, puts too much pressure on the, for, on the provision of community, community facilities. And as uh, the York Civic Trust, in its written submission, M410 on page seven, raises questions about the adequacy of the proposed secondary school, the primary school site allocation. The site, uh, as reduced, uh, as was discussed in the uh, preceding session, is now of relatively marginal viability, as Mr. Porter's assessment shows. If, as we have argued, a higher greenfield affordable housing requirement uh, is to be met, then increasing the size of this site so that the uh, development costs can be spread over a larger number of properties will be crucial to allow uh, the higher level of affordable housing that we think is so desperately needed. In terms of the green belt issues, which have led in part to the reduction of the size, I'd hope the inspector will visit this section of the outer ring road between the A19 North and the Wigginton Road. The reality is that because of a series of successful planning appeals over many years, all but the very last bit near Wigginton Road has been developed all the way up to the Ring Road on the city side. The setting of the city in that regard has been completely destroyed on this section of the outer Ring Road. As we, we feel that whilst the historic, historic England has tried to defend the Greenbelt principle, the imposition of a narrow arbitrary strip between the reduced ST14 settlement and the outer ring road is never going to recover the position that we already have there. We, need to, we feel that you should recognise that it is already an urban context there and the opportunity for a major sustainable new housing development linked to the existing Clifton Moor is an opportunity that shouldn't be missed in terms of an achieving overall sustainable pattern of development for the city. We think the, the strip that has been provided is, is frankly completely artificial. I noted your questioning of the strip west of site ST8, a, uh, ST8 on Monday. Uh, I think you should also look at this particular strip with equal scepticism. 
So that's our major arguments. Uh, in terms of detail, I draw the inspector's attention to the York Labour Party's written submission, M4, 20 pages, 6 to 8, but also the Civic Trust's uh, submission, M4, 10 pages, 7 to 9, because I think there are some quite important points uh, in, in both of those. Uh, clearly, some of them in terms of the transport issues we will pick up uh, in phase four once we have seen the Council's assessment of mitigations that are likely to be required to deal with the major uh, traffic growth and congestion that is currently anticipated. Thank you. Um, yes, as you currently have the, you're in the unusual position of having the floor entirely to yourself. <laughs> Um, is there anything else that you wanted to say, um, Mr. Mayor? Because I, I, I might as well just take all of your points um, in effect so that you can exercise your right to be heard. Um, and then I'll hear from the council um, and then um, I will move on to the, the next side. Um, so does that conclude what, what you wanted to say today? That concludes what I wanted to say today unless the council has particular points that I'd like to come back on. be very brief. I've, I've already given you the references in the context of the um, other matters. Um, this explains, and, and Jane's already explained, the rationale for the green belt boundaries. This is not a narrow strip. The whole point about pulling back the boundary is to avoid it being a sprawl of the urban area. Uh, it's at least three fields wide. It's not a narrow strip at all. And if you look at the proposals map, you'll see it broadly reflects, in fact, it broadly reflects the green gap that exists to the east um, as you uh, travel uh, along the ring road. Uh, and so uh, it would be, it would, it, to, to, to build the boundary up to the ring road would be a serious incursion to the extent that it would be the first extension of the urban area in this location beyond the ring road, which would be immediately contiguous uh, with uh, Clifton Moor. Uh, as I've already said in relation to the previous uh, part of the hearing, um, the Greenbelt assessment and the sustainability appraisal looked at different scale of uh, different scales and different boundaries and uh, rejected those in favour of the current one. I've given you the references so you can see the rationale for that, but essentially it would be a major incursion if, uh, 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 of the urban area into the open countryside uh, if this were extended up to the ring road. Joan, I don't know whether you need to add anything. No, thank you. Um, anything from you, Mr. Merritt? Obviously, I don't, don't expect you. I don't expect the parties around the table now to agree. Oh, as, as I say, I think I've outlined the case for considering the extension, um, and I just draw. As, as I say, I draw your attention to the York Civic Trust, who have adopted the same position. The York Civic Trust have been the greatest and fiercest uh, defenders of the historic character of this city, it's setting the green belt and the rest of it, uh, but even they, I think, have recognised that the past has been utterly sold on this section of the, uh, of the outskirts of the city, and there is a very strong case in terms of providing a sustainable uh, extension uh, in this location. Thank you. Um, and, and just to um, answer your query, Mr Mayor, as I think you'll probably know by now, that um, among lots and lots of other places, I will be visiting um, th this site and, and the surrounding area. Um, which I think means that we can now move on um, to policy SS14. Site ST16. Terry's extension site. Uh, 
Um, and I think, Mr. Elvin, um, you're about to um, yes. update me in relation to um, the current situation. Yeah. Um, uh, what's described as phase three in the current SS14 is, is now built out. Um, phase one is underway, and although we've suggested its deletion, bearing in mind what was said about incomplete development previously, we wonder whether it might be better to leave it in for the time being at least, just to put down a marker for the clock tower. The, the only uh, section which essentially remains is the, is the uh, small element to the east of phase two. Whether you think it's uh, essential we retain the phase one wording uh, is, is, is a matter for you. But certainly what we don't need to have is a reference to master planning. It's rather pointless. <laughs> In the circumstance, I don't think we can justify master planning the, the, the small remaining phase three. OK, so, um, sorry, make sure I've got this right. I think you said phase three is built. Phase three is built. It is, yeah, it, it, and not as residential either, just to make that... It's not a residential use that's on there. It was brought forward as a, um, an acute brain injury clinic, so a healthcare facility. The phase, phase two that Mr. Elvin... So, sorry, phase one underway, and that, that is residential. That's a residential conversion, yes. And, and phase two? Phase two is, um, doesn't have planning permission, albeit it has an, an application which is um, pending or subject to an inquiry back in April of this year. And that was for a, an extra care facility. So, was that an appeal? It wasn't a. a was that a Secretary of State case or not? No, it was an appeal against non-determination. Yeah, what I'm getting at is whether or not you're expecting the decision soon. Um, Pin's delivery rates are not looking great at the moment, he said cautiously. <laughs> but I'm not expecting you to comment. So uh, it comes when it comes. <laughs> but it, well, the inquiry was in April. Uh, and and the, the key point, um, the, the reason, um, the, or the key matter that was d debated during that inquiry was a design-related one, not one of principle. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, and in relation to the, the point about whether or not phase one um, should be deleted from the plan, um, yeah, it, it's, I'm not entirely sure that there's a right or wrong answer here, um, but probably um, some consistency um, w would be desirable. I think by and large, the council has proposed deleting sites where they've been completed um, in this examination, haven't you? I, I hear different things in different examinations of what the council wants to do. We've tended to leave in the sites that are underway but not completed in the event that there's a change or a revised application uh, or a section 73, perhaps. So uh, I think we, 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 we would prefer for consistency to reinstate the terminology for phase one, delete phase three, and then correct the 33 dwellings which relate to phase two. So it goes from 50, whatever it is, 56 to 33, I think. Yeah, the, 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 yes, the, the, 
we need to reword the opening sentence just to make clear which bits we're referring to. I think there was actually an error in what was struck through. Um, so we'll, we need to... I think the answer is we need to redraft the policy for you. <laughs> but make it, if you're happy, make it consistent and leave in phase one, but delete phase three. Uh, that, that strikes me as a reasonable approach, yeah. I asked Mr. Ridge to give you his childhood reminiscences of smelling Terry's chocolate oranges in his school, which was next door. <laughs> right, so in relation to when, when I look at So you'd, you'd think that we were holding this hearing in New York or somewhere. The amount of times emergency vehicles go wailing past. But, um, yeah, so um, when, when I look at the um, allocation on the policies map, um, which bit is yeah, what can you describe to me the three through, phases? Sure. Okay, so when we refer to phase one, the clock tower, that is, in effect, um, within the northern part of... The site um, where it, you can see in faded writing factory, it is one of those buildings there. Um, worth just um, pointing out that this site has long been undergoing conversion and redevelopment work, so what the policy refers to is, is the last bits of its redevelopment. So the clock tower is a, um, a building within that northern section. Um, the phase two car park, which as I say is subject to that appeal, is actually on the eastern side. Um, that little square on the other side of the road and the hospital facility that is now occupying phase three um, referred to as land to the rear of the factory is the, the southern square under, which sits in effect underneath where it says ST16. I see, right, so it's the southernmost part of ST16 that has been built already. Yes, as a, a, a hospital facility, yeah. The northernmost part is a residential conversion. Predominantly, And so yeah. it, in terms of, you know, what might be to come, the, um, any question mark around that? Um, relates to the bit on the other side, the phase two part on the other side of the road. That's right. That's the car park. It's currently a car park. Yes. Good. Um, can you tell me briefly about the Greenbelt boundaries? I won't go through all of them in turn, but I will say that um, they are overall a clear defensible boundary um, following built form um, and roads. You will note the um, amendment um, to extend the boundary from the submitted allocation, which extends um, largely to the west. Um, that then follows the edge of the built footprint um, of the buildings at the race course, as well as the race course road itself. Um, yeah. Um I think That's I've, I've the proposed left. modification, uh, excuse me, uh, um, 93. Yeah, do, do you have a, a hard copy of that to that hand? I've left my, my copy upstairs. It's, it's not in there either.
so um, on the face of it, this looks like this m might be a, a site visit I've already done. It's a couple of weeks there. So that is to include then, is it within the green belt, um, the main race course building? Um, well, it does, doesn't it? it? No, it takes the race course building out of the green belt. It's within the allocation. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, my, my, my apologies. But it leaves the race course within the green belt. Yeah, just to the sort of northwestern corner of the red line um, of the proposed main modification. Um, I can't remember. Um, are, are those buildings there or something else? Buildings proposed to be taken out. I'm looking at Google Earth here. Um, <laughs> there are buildings proposed to be taken out. Those geometric shapes just to the west are green, uh, are grassed areas. There are some small buildings in the green belt outside the red line, but they are small. The main building is uh, within the uh, amendment, I think. Um, yeah, if you could just help me out. I, I, I don't recall um, the, that proposed modification giving rise to any particular issues. Um, ha, have I forgotten something? There have been no objections to that. Yeah, that was my, my recollection. Okay, I don't think I have any other any other questions on this, unless there's anything the council wants to um, tell me about. Marvellous, thank you. I think that leaves us ST31. And this, this is one which um, has a resolution to approve, uh, subject to planning obligation, uh, dated the 11th of July, but it's currently awaiting uh, uh, um, a referral to the Secretary of State. It was considered um, by the committee, considered that uh, very special circumstances existed uh, and to be deliverable. And the special circumstances, including the unmet housing need, won't surprise you to hear. Okay, and um, the resolution to grant, um, can you just tell me what, what that was for? Was that a full or an outline? Yeah. 158 outline with all matters reserved except access. Public open space landscaping and drainage included. Sorry, all matters reserved except access. Except access, yes.
Um, and we have a new open space proposed to the sort of, well, northeastern tip um, of, of that. Is there a particular reason for that? That was um, to help secure and protect some of the, the um, issues that were raised through the con um, local plans consultation process, particularly regarding um, Historic England's concern on the site. So it's serving a, a purpose of helping retain the openness rather than having a, a use purpose, which some of those open spaces that are um, covered by that particular policy um, seek to achieve. Yeah, if you, if you want the reference in the Heritage Impact Assessment, it's SD 101 uh, PDF page 51. I'm just getting you the PDF page in the Green Belt Assessment. It's 4033. Uh, right. It's, yeah, it's uh, CD, uh, sorry, it's CYC 59. Which is, what's the letter? No, 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 uh, the green belt. Sorry, I'm trying to remember which volume it's in. F. F. <laughs> the one I don't. Yeah, no, no, I'm trying to get the PDF page number. Sorry, sir. If, if you have the internal page number, that, that, that's also fine. 84. 34. And it's 41 PDF. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Mr. Lee, can I just... Um, Clarify, are you, are you here to speak about this side? Uh, yeah, sir. Go on then. Um, obviously, government fully support the allocation in the plan and the Greenbelt boundaries. Um, I just wanted to address the concerns of Historic England in relation to the site's allocation. Um, our starting position is that we disagree with Historic England's assessment of the importance of this site to the, the setting of the historic city. Um, we undertook an LVIA and a heritage assessment as part of the planning application which has been mentioned, um, which found that this site um, does not play a significant part um, in the setting of the historic city and that there would be no significant impact. Um, in any event, the Council's heritage impact assessment identifies only minor harm to uh, principal characteristic six, which is dealing with the landscape and setting of the city. Um, it recommends mitigation um, by way of the strategic open space that's been mentioned, uh, which will provide um, foreground openness um, as you travel along uh, Tadcaster Road into Cottmanthorpe. Um, and it also recommends provision of a landscape buffer, a tree edge um, to the development. Um, so with that mitigation in place, um, Historic England say that the, the gap between uh, Cotman Thorpe and the uh, built up area of, of the city will reduce by 175 metres. Um, taking the edge of the Askham Bar Park and Ride site to be the, the edge to the, the built-up area um, 
I calculate that there will be still just shy of a kilometre gap um, between the site or the developable area of the site and the, the park and ride site. Um, when you visit sites, uh, you'll appreciate when you're on site that there is um, no appreciation of the edge of the city from the site itself. Um, similarly, from the edge of the city, there's no appreciation of the edge of Cotman Thorpe Village. So when you say no appreciation, do you mean you can't see it? Precisely, yes. No, no, no visual link. Um, there is the A64 dual carriageway, which essentially provides a strong visual barrier between the two. Um, when you're travelling along the A64, you currently see the edge of the city to your left if you're travelling eastbound, um, and you see Cotton Thorpe Village to the east, that will, or to, the, to your right, um, that will continue to be the case. Um, the heritage topic paper refers to the clock face of uh, freestanding villages around the city. Um, that will continue to be the case. Um, it will still be a freestanding settlement separate from the city itself. Um, I'm just taking a step back really on this point. Um, obviously there's a need to promote sustainable patterns of development um, and no issue has been raised in terms of the uh, sustainable location of the allocated site. Um, Historic England refer to the loss of an area of farmland which forms part of the open countryside beyond the main built up area of the city. Clearly, sir, by, by definition, developing any site outside of the built up area will result in a change to the landscape setting of the historic city. That doesn't necessarily equate to harm. Um, say that the site is surrounded by uh, major transport infrastructure corridors with the A64 to the north and the East Coast Main Line to the south. Again, when, when you visit the site, sir, you'll appreciate that there are no views of important elements of the historic city, such as the Minster, from the site. Um, there is not alleged to be a impact in terms of the significance of any designated heritage assets, um, and there's no impact in terms of strays or ings. Um, so really just considering the, the, the test for you, sir, obviously we're, we're not looking here for exceptional circumstances. The boundaries are being established for the first time. There I is think I recall that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, there is scope for a degree of harm and a judgment needs to be um, formed and, and, and we consider that the, the allocation and the Greenbelt boundaries are justified, effective and consistent with national policy. Thanks, sir. Um, are you here to argue for any, um, any modifications to the plan at all, Mr Lee? The only slight concern that we'd highlighted on it, I don't think we mentioned it in the hearing statement, unfortunately, so apologies for that, but it, it was in our previous reps. Um, in relation to the open space, it's uh, point two to the policy. There's a requirement for that to be delivered prior to the first phase of development. Um, we would just ask whether the, the wording of that could be tightened slightly to refer to first occupation as opposed to, it, it could be read as commencement of development and obviously we would need to form an access to the site in order to be able to 
get on site and form that open space. So. Happy to change first, that first occupation. I mean, I appreciate, we appreciate the logistics, but if you commence, you can't get it. You, you've got to do it before commencement, you can't get in. Well, the, the trip here today was definitely worth your trouble. Changed. <laughs> so can I just, I just say the, the, the points um, that Mr Lee's just made uh, are reflected in the committee report as well, which uh, properly considers historic England's objection uh, and uh, takes into account the provision of the new public open space uh, and its location within the major infrastructure and as an extension uh, to the existing settlement. So all those factors are taken into account in the committee report. And indeed, uh, if you need to go any further at all, the uh, question of the impact on heritage assets is dealt with in the sustainability appraisal uh, CD9B at page, PDF page 233 to 4. And the mitigation uh, was good master planning and design and that the council has been satisfied in terms of the application that it has been properly designed and master planned. Okay, thank you very much for that, Mr. Irvin. I don't have any further questions um, on, on this unless there's anything else you, you wanted to add, Mr. Lee. Okay, very good. Um, which brings us then um, to the end of our morning session, um, which I will now adjourn um, to resume at 2 o'clock.